Hi, my name is Becky Larkins. I'm the Supervisory Refuge Ranger at the Southeast Louisiana National Wildlife Refuges Complex in Lacombe, Louisiana. I am a part of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and we have some fun, exciting programs that can get you out in St. Tammany this March and also this April. So one of our major programs that we have is we have our March interpretive program schedule and this program schedule is all free and can be found on our website at www.fws.gov backslash refuge backslash big branch marsh this program schedule has a lot to offer on some Fridays, on every Friday in March, except for Mardi Gras week, we have what we call a 10 o'clock Bayou Trek program that meets at our Refuges Visitor Center. This program will take you through our headquarters trail site and we'll talk about the natural and cultural history of the area. And it is fun for all ages and that's every Friday at 10 a.m. We also have a wonderful woodpeckers program starting at 10 o'clock at Boy Scout Road Trail and Boardwalk, and that is in Big Branch Marsh National Wildlife Refuge. This program on Thursdays is all about the red cockaded woodpecker, but we'll also be taking a short hike on Big Branch Marsh for that program, and we will talk about local natural history as well, along with local habitats and what wildlife you can see in that area. On March 15th, which is a Friday, and March 29th, which is another Friday at 9.30, we are having a free Nature Explorers program for zero to six-year-olds. This fun program is focusing on our little visitors and their parents when they come out we get to learn about wildlife through a fun interactive story from the story we then do a craft after the craft we go on a short trail hike but it is fun for everyone you can also get out at breakfast with the birds in bayou sauvage national wildlife refuge on sundays starting at eight at 7 30 in the morning and that's a very fun program to where you can go learn more about birds and you can bring your breakfast and at the end of the day you tally what birds you spotted at the end of the morning you tally what birds you spotted and you can enjoy your breakfast and it's a great time for question and answer session with a refuge volunteer or staff person so that is breakfast with the birds at bayou sauvage national wildlife refuge ridge trail on sundays at eight o'clock in the morning. We also have registration is now open for our Junior Rangers Spring Break Day Camp. So you can go onto our website or you can stop by our visitor center and pick up a registration form. The Junior Rangers Day Camp is for eight to 10 year olds and it's a lot of fun. It's hosted during the St. Tammany Parish Spring Break for the schools. And while the students come, we are accepting applications for about 20, but there will be a random drawing. But you need to get your registration forms in by four o'clock on March 27th. After that, we will make a random selection and those participants who have not participated in prior Junior Ranger camps will be accepted into the camp. When you get accepted, you get a bag, you get a nature journal, some crayons and pencils. You also get a really cool uh, reusable water bottle. And this is all that the, the Junior Rangers get to take home with them at the end of camp. But they use all of these items during camp. And we do fun, exciting activities. Those activities include hiking, they get to go um, do some nature photography. They also get to go learn about some wildlife observation, canoeing, and there's just so many great activities that they get to do. We also have live animal presentations from some of our local um, area partners. So it's just um, a great event for everyone to get on board. Now, after the random drawing, there is a $65 fee for those junior rangers to participate in camp in order to cover camp costs. That fee is, if there is financial assistance, there is financial assistance available. You just need to contact myself, which is uh, Ranger Becky Larkins, 
at 985-882-2025. If you have any questions about Junior Rangers Camp, you can contact me directly as well. We could not do all of these amazing programs in and around St. Tammany Parish if it wasn't for our amazing Friends of the Louisiana Wildlife Refuges. You can find out more information on how you can become a friend and sponsor refuge programs by going to their website, www.flwr.org. And they always have some exciting ways on how you can help sponsor events like the Junior Rangers Day Camp and other free programs that are offered through the Southeast Louisiana National Wildlife Refuges Complex. There's a lot going on, and with a lot going on, the best way to keep up to date with all of our special events and all of our free programs is to like us on Facebook at Southeast Louisiana. From there, you can be up to date with all of the free programs that we have offered, and at the same time, you can find out about volunteer opportunities and other ways that you can get involved in your National Wildlife Refuges. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me, Becky Larkins, at 985-882-2025, or you can email me at Rebecca, R-E-B-E-C-C-A, underscore Larkins, L-A-R-K-I-N-S, at F-W-S dot G-O-V. You can also go to our website at www.fws.gov backslash refuge backslash big underscore branch underscore marsh. Thank you all, and we hope to see you out on the trail soon. But it would be safe to keep your distance until the oh, secret does not make you smile. One of the sources say the chicken mm. soup has proved it's found their way out of this. Closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. Hey, my name is Will Afton. I work with the LSU Ag Center here in St. Tammany Parish. And this month I want to encourage everybody to get out and, and try some, some gardening this spring season. Uh, Today, look, I've brought a whole collection of plant material. Uh, that's what most people love about gardening is the fact that, you know, we grow pretty flowers. They smell nice. They, you know, maybe they attract butterflies, hummingbirds. Uh, but there's just so much selection out there that uh, sometimes it can be a little difficult when you go to the garden center to, uh, you know, look at all these plants and see what, what are you going to plant in your yard. Seems to be always some new variety that's out there. And, uh, uh, you know, it just it makes it difficult. So I, hopefully here I can shed a little light to maybe uh, make things a little bit easier. So before you go to the garden center, you might want to make it a point to, uh, you know, note your flower beds and note what, what's, how, mu how much sunlight do they receive. Uh, you know, some beds are shaded for most of the day. Some beds may be shaded for portions of the day. And then some beds might be left out there and just get sun all day. And, uh, you know, all these different plants that we choose from, they all have different light requirements. So make that a point to do a little bit of homework before you go out there so you know the, uh, the sunlight conditions in your flower bed. Uh, now I've got a whole selection of plants here. These are, most of these are going to be spring, summertime plants that will grow during the warm season. Uh, uh, something that's really small, uh, doesn't get but maybe six to eight inches from the ground, creates a nice little carpet, is this alyssum flower. It's very fragrant. That's the first thing you notice about it when it's planted in the garden. But it does well into the spring springtime, and it'll do good up until it gets really hot. So usually by the end of June, it might fizzle out, but we have a lot of time now if we get it planted in March. Uh, Another full sun plant here is this, uh, this baby wing begonia. Begonias are very popular garden plants. Uh, they've been around for a long time. Everybody's mother grew a begonia at one time. 
Uh, this baby wing series, we actually named it an LSU Ag Center Super Plant. Uh, it's been grown throughout the state of Louisiana and it performs well, easy to grow, easy to maintain, uh, can handle a good bit of sunlight but can also handle a good bit of shade too. Uh, they'll probably get to be two and a half feet at the end of the summertime, uh, almost growing into a hedge. It's a very tough plant and very easy to grow plant. Uh, just kind of moving right along, another low growing plant, this uh, what we used to call fan flower is uh, scaviola. Uh, scaviola is kind of a creeping plant. Uh, a lot of times at the garden center you'll see these planted in a hanging basket because that creeping effect will grow over the side of the pot and droop down. Uh, you can get it in a few different colors. Here's a white, a pink, and a purple. Uh, it's a very popular plant. can be used as a ground cover uh, or can be used in, a, in a, maybe a container gardening plant. It's planted on the edge so you get that spillover effect. Uh, another good summertime plant here is uh, Pentas. Uh, Pentas is another very popular plant. It's actually a perennial plant where it's native to, but we treat them as annuals here in Louisiana. Uh, grows all during the summertime and blooms all during the summertime. It's a, it's a great butterfly plant. Those flowers produce a lot of nectar, uh, which will attract those butterflies. Speaking of butterflies, uh, butterfly gardening and pollinator gardening are two niche gardening concepts that are uh, gaining a lot of popularity. Uh, I get a lot of calls and questions on how do I attract pollinators, how do I attract butterflies, uh, but basically with both of them we have you know butterflies, moths, all the different pollinators, they're attracted to nectar in the flowers of plants. So uh, there are certain plants that just produce more nectar than others. Uh, one of those being uh, sage plant or salvia plants. The whole genus of salvia is known for producing a lot of nectar. Uh, so if you want to attract uh, butterflies and all types of pollinators, plant several varieties of sage in the garden. Uh, also too, uh, with butterflies, uh, butterflies, the adult butterfly feeds on nectar of the plant, but uh, the larval stage, that caterpillar stage, uh, you know, before metamorphosis, they actually feed on the foliage of plants. So what you find with butterflies is uh, there's a whole slew of what we call host plants. And so these specific butterflies, uh, they'll fly, lay their eggs on a, on a specific host plant, and uh, those young will develop and feed on the foliage. They're very specific. So with a butterfly garden, if you're trying to attract certain species, uh, you can actually go out and plant certain host plants in the garden to, uh, to attract those and have those occur in your garden. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of information out there. The LSU Ag Center actually pu publishes a, uh, a publication on butterfly garden that has some nice charts in there that explain all the different host plants. Uh, so you can get that at lsuagcenter.com. Uh, butterfly Gardening for Louisianians is the title. Uh, but this plant back here, this taller plant, this is uh, what we call butterfly weed or Asclepius. Uh, I don't have any blooms on this plant just yet, but this one actually blooms a red and orange bloom. It produces a lot of nectar, but it's also the larval host plant for the monarch butterfly, which is probably the most common butterfly uh, that we have here in Louisiana. So not only is this a host plant for the monarch butterfly, the flowers actually produce a lot of nectar to attract other butterflies as well. So butterfly weed is a staple for butterfly gardens in Louisiana. Uh, speaking of pollinators, you know, butterfly or honeybees actually get all the attention, uh, but butterflies, moths, other flying insects can also be pollinators. Uh, but one thing we don't think about is, uh, is birds. Uh, there are birds that feed on the nectar of plants and in doing so they might help that plant out in pollination. Uh, so back here we have a, uh, a kufia plant. Some people might know it as cigar plant. Uh, so uh, kufias, they bloom tubular shaped flowers which are perfect for the beak of that hummingbird to, uh, to fly down in there and, and feed on that nectar, but at the same time could knock some pollen around and pollinate that plant. Uh, so if you want to attract some hummingbirds, look for tubular shaped flowers and kufia is a great choice. Uh, just moving right along here, uh, so a lot of these plants I've mentioned earlier are sun loving plants, so they can take a, a good amount of sun. Uh, there are plants though that do well in the shade. Uh, we have a couple of coleuses here. Uh, these are shade coleus. Uh, when you shop coleus in the garden center, pay attention to where it's located. If it's located under a shade tarp, then it's a shade variety. But if they have that variety of coleus out in the full sun, then it's a sun variety. These two are shade coleuses. Uh, they provide very good color, and what I like about coleus is they provide texture. 
uh, those big, those big coarse shaped leaves really provide a nice texture contrast with other plants in the landscape. Uh, it's also something to think about because with the colorful foliage you usually get a longer presentation time than you do with the flower. And then when growing coleus, uh, because we like and grow them for those beautiful uh, big leaves, uh, you know, if they do produce a flower, we like to go through and pinch those out because we just want it to produce more and more leaves. We don't really want it to flower. Uh, another good plant for the shade here is, uh, is Terenia. Uh, some older gardeners might know this as wishbone flower, but uh, I mentioned earlier about the LSU Ag Center Super Plant Program. Uh, we actually have the Kauai series of Terenia as, a, uh, as one of our super plants that we promote in the springtime, but Terenia loves to grow in the shade. Uh, thrives during all during the warm season, so spring, summer through fall, uh, you'll have big, beautiful plants. Uh, they're very tough plants; they can take a beating. You know, if they get rained on, they bounce right back. Uh, it's one of the most well-known qualities about Terenius. Uh, now, speaking about uh, texture plants, uh, another interesting plant here that uh, that uh, we've named a Louisiana Ag, LSU Ag Center super plant is Alternanthra. This, uh, it's a variety called Joseph's Coat. It uh, gets about 12 to 16 inches tall, uh, produces this nice purple foliage. Uh, not quite as coarse as a coleus, but uh, it provides a different texture to look at. Uh, Alternanthras are great plants to have. Uh, let's see, another common plant that I'm seeing in the, not only in the landscape, but also hanging baskets, container uh, plantings, is a sweet potato vine. And we all know that uh, you know, Louisiana can grow some great sweet potatoes uh, as far as the agronomic crop is concerned. But uh, at the garden center, you'll actually find ornamental sweet potato varieties. Uh, here we have this one called Ace of Spades with this nice die cut foliage, a nice deep purple texture. Uh, and then I have one back here called Marguerite. Uh, it, uh, it has a lime green uh, margarita colored foliage. Uh, kind of strikingly different. These are nice vining plants that you get that spillover effect. Uh, they can even cover ground. They can be used as a ground cover uh, and they will, they will thrive all season long. So you get a, you get a uh, long lasting effect from planting a uh, sweet potato vine into the garden. Uh, another LSU Ag Center super plant, uh, and it's the first time we've uh, actually selected a succulent type plant, but uh, if anybody's familiar with growing sedums in the garden, sedums are very easy to grow plants. Uh, they are very cactus-like, those big succulent leaves. Uh, they can, they'll thrive in a full sun location. If you forget to water them a few times, they're okay with that. Uh, very resilient plant. But back here we have this, uh, this lemon, uh, lemon coral sedum. Uh, this really bright, bright green fluorescence color really stands out in the landscape. Uh, low growing ground cover type plant. Uh, you see that fine texture so uh, you know you could pair that with some coarse textures to get a really good combination going but just a very easy to grow plant and uh, uh, excellent choice to, to grow in your Louisiana garden. Uh, you know uh, they're so popular I don't want to forget about mentioning them but uh, you know petunias. Uh, it's another one of those just popular plants you see at the garden center. Uh, usually you walk out and the first several tables are probably filled with different varieties of petunia. That's because of its popularity, not only in Louisiana, but across the, uh, across the country. Uh, this bubblegum vista series down here, this bright pink flower, uh, an excellent performer. Uh, it's also an LSU Ag Center super plant. Uh, petunias, uh, you know, a lot of people get their petunias planted in November and they let them grow all season long throughout the spring. Uh, but we can totally get a planting done in March and have excellent plants for the, uh, you know, for the spring and early summer season. Uh, they will fizzle out a little bit during the months of July and August, uh, so at that time maybe we're replacing them and putting them with something else. But uh, petunias, uh, especially some of these newer varieties, really work well in our Louisiana climate. Uh, another well-known plant, and this is also a super plant uh, selected by the LSU Ag Center, is Lantana. Uh, Lantana is a larger growing shrub. Uh, some of the older varieties will reach about five to six feet, but this bandana lantana is a little bit smaller, a little bit more uh, miniature in size, so maybe three to four feet. Uh, produces a lot of nectar, so it's a great plant to include in your butterfly or pollinator garden. Uh, as long as we don't get excessive rainfalls, it'll produce flowers all season long. Uh, it's a, just another great plant to uh, include in the garden. 
and it can be treated as perennial. So, uh, you know, when cool weather comes in the fall, maybe knocks it back some, we can prune it back, cover it with mulch, and we can expect that plant to come back next year. Uh, let's see, for the shade garden, uh, we have, there are several ferns that we can choose from in Louisiana. And uh, we have several macho ferns on the set here, but uh, you know, we also have Boston ferns in the back. Uh, there's Japanese painted ferns. There's a holly fern, uh, even you know, asparagus fern. All of these thrive well in, in a shaded garden, add a nice tropical look, and uh, can even handle a little excess moisture, which uh, you know, we uh, experience quite often here in Louisiana. So for your shade gardens and shade areas, look at all the varieties of ferns that you find at the garden center. Uh, you know, to, to make a nice selection to add to your garden. Another common topic that I get in the springtime that I would like to share a little information on is, uh, you know, what to do for your lawn in the springtime. You know, we're sitting all winter long and, uh, you know, our lawn's not growing, uh, just it looks bland. And uh, so as soon as we hear spring is coming, we want to get out there and we want to do what we can to, uh, you know, to help it out or, you know, start, start maintaining it. So. Uh, Basically, this month of March, we just need to let it come back, let it grow in. Uh, it's going to come back in patches. It's going to awake from dormancy. Uh, it'll, it'll soon green up, but it's going to go through what we call the spring green up phase. During that spring green up phase, I like to refrain from spraying herbicides. Uh, I refrain from fertilizing because I just I want that plant to, uh, to come out of dormancy on its own. And then uh, usually by April 15th, we can make that first application of fertilizer. A lot of people get themselves in trouble by fertilizing too early in the season, especially during wet seasons. Uh, there's a disease out there called brown patch uh, that will run rampant in a wet lawn, especially after an application of fertilizer. So wait until April 15th, tax day, to do your fertilizing. Uh, there's several herbicides out there that, can, uh, that you can actually spray over the top of your lawn that can help you with a uh, with broadleaf weeds, even some of the grassy type weeds. Uh, make sure you identify what species of turf grass you have uh, because if you read the uh, information label, some of these can be used in some species and then some of them can't. So identify what you have, uh, try to identify those weeds, and then uh, you know, go talk with some of the staff members at the garden center about a, an appropriate herbicide that will uh, maybe give you some help there. Uh, most of all these herbicide sprays, we call them post-emergent herbicides. These are going to be sprayed after the fact. Uh, they're going to be sprayed on top of the grass to, to get all those weeds that are growing in the grass. But there's a new type of herbicide that's out there. We refer to them as pre-emergent herbicides. And these pre-emergent herbicides are usually in a granular form, but you can find them in a liquid form. Uh, and they're sprayed out over the lawn. They cover the entire area. Uh, and what they do is they pr provide a, a nice herbicide layer right at ground level. So as seeds germinate, they'll grow through that herbicide layer. They'll we'll kill them then, and we don't ever even see them. Uh, so look to use pre-emergent herbicides. Include those into your toolbox. Uh, can be very effective against annual weeds. Uh, and uh, most garden centers, home improvement stores, have a few selections for you to choose from. Uh, just make sure you always read and follow the label instructions when you apply any pesticide to the garden. And to wrap things up, remember that my name is Will Afton. I work for the Louisiana Cooperative Extension Ser Service under the LSU Ag Center. Uh, my office is in Covington. I'm located at the fairgrounds. Uh, and I'm here, I provide a service to the citizens of St. Tammany. So if you have any gardening questions, you have gardening problems, uh, or maybe you, uh, you maybe heard about something new that needs to be explained or whatnot, how to get involved, give me a contact. Uh, we have lsuagcenter.com is our website. My local phone number is 985-875-2635. You can contact my office to get in touch with me. Uh, you, but feel free to reach out. You know, I also work with the Master Gardeners of St. Tammany Parish. Uh, I'm actually a Master Gardener Coordinator, so I train them and use them as my kind of volunteer service to help me just get more programming to the people of St. Tammany. Uh, they have a website, www.stmastergardener.org, and uh, I do several, several events with the Master Gardeners. We do a spring and fall gardening seminar uh, in the month of March. Uh, this year it's going to be March 15th and 16th. We do the big North Shore Garden Show and Plant Sale, where there's going to be several vendors there selling plants. 
a lot of vendors are actually wholesale nurseries from St. Tammany Parish, so it's locally grown product. Uh, we also put on an extensive education program. We have speakers coming in both days. I have Master Gardener volunteers giving small demo table talks throughout the whole event, both Friday and Saturday. So it's a great, a great place to, you know, just, you know, learn a lot of uh, just different gardening information, or you can always catch me there and pull me aside to ask a question. Uh, just remember, uh, the LSU Ag Center is here for you and all of your gardening needs. Thank you.